Welcome to the Centre for Precision Agriculture. I'm Robert Pearson from Auto Spray Systems, and we supply electric, autonomous drones and robots to UK farmers. Over the next 10 minutes, I'll give you an overview of the capabilities of the very latest spray drones. I'll explain how they work and how they're operated. Naturally, we'll show you them in action, and we'll speak to local farmers about their opinions on how this type of technology might be used on their farms today. I'll also outline our understanding of the current legislation and the main obstacles that are preventing widespread use of drones on UK farms today. I'm quite sure there will be areas of interest that I don't cover in the next 10 minutes. So if you make a note, I'll be happy to take those questions in the panel discussion at the end of this meeting. Okay, so let's take a look at the drones in a little more detail. All the drones and robots in our range are electrically powered. They use state-of-the-art 48-volt lithium-ion batteries that can be hot-swapped in a matter of seconds. Even with the battery removed, the drone and robot systems remain active for rapid, continuous operation. These batteries are also super-fast to recharge. From empty, they take 22 minutes from a 13-amp plug, or 13 minutes if charged from our infield system. And of course, if you're recharging from a renewable source, your carbon footprint will be slashed. The spray system is at the heart of the drone. XAG have been developing and refining the intelligent centrifugal disc system on real farms for the last 15 years. It is preferred to nozzle-based systems because it doesn't easily block and gives accurate control of droplet size over a much wider range. The faster it spins, at speeds up to 16,000 RPM, the finer the droplets. The 20 litre spray tank, which has real-time volume sensing, can be quickly changed, allowing farmers to spray more than 15 hectares per hour. Both the drones and the robots can be easily converted for seed and pellet spreading. The drones have a 25 litre capacity, again with real-time volume sensing, and give an even coverage over a 10 metre strip in a single pass. The gravity-fed screw feeder is a simple, high capacity system that avoids blockages. Imagine slug belleting a five hectare waterlogged field with a single load in 15 minutes. Certainly beats getting the tractor stuck. All the drones navigate using a centimeter level RTK system. The portable ground station provides an accurate fixed reference point to the onboard RTK system to ensure precise positioning. Multi-directional radars working with high-speed processors allow for real-time obstacle avoidance and accurate terrain following. Whether you farm in the Cheshire Plains or the Welsh Hills, the drone will maintain a constant height above the ground. But of course, no piece of new tech is any use if it's so complicated to set up that you have to ask a teenager for help. Like most things these days, the drones are controlled from a simple visual phone app. If you can use your phone, you're halfway there. While these state-of-the-art drones may be news in the UK and Europe, in many other countries they're simply another tool in the barn. For the last 15 years, XAG drones have been hard at work protecting millions of fields across China, Asia-Pacific, South America, Africa, Australia, and more recently in the European mainland in Switzerland and the Ukraine. During this time, the XAG system has evolved to be incredibly simple to operate and robust, like any good farm tool. In fact, so great is the adoption of drones for plant protection spraying around the world that the big chemical manufacturers are now paying very close attention. Recently, Bayer took delivery of a full suite of equipment so they can develop application data sheets for their product range. To bring matters a little closer to home, I think it would be helpful to hear what local farmers think about the use of drones in the UK. Hi, I'm Richard Forkingham and uh, I'm a farmer in Yorkshire, uh, growing many cereals, but we have land outside where we're growing potatoes, vining peas, uh, oilseed rape and wheat and barley. The environmental benefits from this farm, if this had been available this year, uh, on two occasions, uh, A, in a field of vining peas, we wanted to put some, some chemical on to help the pea crop but actually we couldn't get on with the sprayer because it was too wet. But if we'd have had a drone, we could have sprayed it at the optimum time. We would not have been in the same risk. The other, on the other occasion, 
where we had a problem this year is we planted a field of potatoes. Uh, it became very wet after planting and we didn't manage to put a pre-emergent spray on. When the potato crop was harvested, there was also a very big crop of grass there with it as well, all putting seed back into the ground. And because the seed went back into the ground, uh, then that is a bank of seed that is going to generate new plants over the next several years that we're going to have to try and control again. Now, if I'd have put my pre-emergence spray on with a drone, I wouldn't have had that issue. And then I could have planted a crop of winter wheat. Uh, the other thing that we can put on this machine is, is a, uh, a granular applicator. A lot of the times, you know, we can get in the fields, say for instance, we can put uh, slug pellets on with this machine. Now, sometimes when we're slug pelleting, the land has become too wet. Uh, so if you went on with a vehicle, you would make a mess or you would get stuck and you wouldn't be able to do it. So theoretically with this machine, if you could put the slug pellets on with this, get away with using less slug pellets because the population could be kept to a minimum to start with because you couldn't travel on the field. So when you had to go back, you would theoretically have used less, less uh, slug pellets altogether because you could travel earlier. You could then control the slugs at an earlier stage so that the wheat crop could grow away with it, grow away from it and it would be less affected by the slugs. I think if, if you're looking at seeding through one of these machines is that in, in practical situations, uh, like say for instance you were trying to establish an oilseed rape crop uh, where it had been very wet and you didn't want to go in with a minimum cultivation tool and you had tracks on your combine harvester, you could then go with one of these drones and you could actually go and spread the rape seed on the surface and just let the rape grow and then you could go back and slug pellet it with the same machine. It would be ideal for that. However, before Andrew and Richard can start using their electric autonomous drones in earnest, we need to make sure they can do so legally. So what is the current position? Andrew Sproson, our COO and head of training, has given me the basics here. Excuse me if I read some of this. The UK Civil Aviation Authority is a leading partner in the European Aviation Safety Agency's drive to harmonise rules of the air. This means that we are an essential part of the campaign to have a common set of rules across the EU. This is not a political or a Brexit issue. This is simply a matter of air safety in shared airspace. To give you an overview, an organisation who wishes to operate drones in a specific category requires training. This is the General Visual Line of Sight Certificate, known as the GVC. You are eligible to apply then to the CAA for an operational authorization under which you can fly drones with a maximum takeoff weight of 25 kilos under the predefined risk assessment one scheme. The CAA are keen to progress the drone industry and have approved a second PDRA that allows organizations to fly unmanned aircraft between 25 and 150 kilos for initial trials, testing and case studies. Autospray Systems has a PDRA2 and importantly, we are approved to train clients in this skill set. I felt that it was important that you understood the background as we are working towards several future goals. The first is to bring drone training to the grassroots. We have embedded the GVC into T-levels and other qualifications in a number of UK college and university groups where the GVC course makes up 20% of the student's final T-level mark. Our next goal is to introduce a qualification in the agricultural field. The variables from droplet size, flight speed, height, chemical mix, in our belief, should be trained, qualified, with standards set for specific use cases. Finally, we are campaigning to introduce a standard scenario for the use of drones in crop spraying. This would be part of a PDRA scheme and would allow a farmer to obtain training and operate within a specific set of guidelines. This would allow the widespread use and adoption of this technology. Well, I hope that that has been a useful insight into what is possible and in use in many countries today. Farmers around the world are leveraging the benefits of autonomous electric drone spraying. And in a global market, it's important that UK farmers have equal access to the same technology.
Farming in the UK has a strong tradition of innovation, and this gives the UK an excellent opportunity to lead Europe into the autonomous farming future. Thank you.